to do that first part Come again. On. I know that a lot of the times we fight the devil all week long, and we don't realize that we have the power to lock, bind on, up the church. enemy in our lives. We have that power. God gave it to us. So I want everybody yes, to stand Lord. up. If you've got the Lord on your side, you have power this morning. Come so on. I want you to sing that like you mean it. We have the power. So let's sing it and give God some praise. Glory. This is, what this is what we come to do. Oh, tear down strongholds, break the chains. Put the devil in Jesus' name. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundation with praise. Glory, hallelujah. This is what. This is what this is what we've come to do. Don't tear, tear down strongholds, break the chain. I'm a devil. I'm a devil in Jesus' name. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Praise him. Praise, praise him. him. Come on, go ahead and praise him right praise now. Him. Just lift your hands across the house and give him praise. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundation with praise. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, oh. Praise him. Praise him. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundation with praise. Glory, hallelujah. This is what this is what we come to do. Oh, tear down strongholds, break the chains. you make it personal this morning and say, this is what I came to do. Come on. Tonight, I got a right. Tonight, I got a right. Tonight, I got a right to shake the foundation with praise. We're going to praise him. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and worship the Lord this morning. Oh, tear down stronghold. Break the chains. Find the devil in Jesus' name. Praise him. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you and praise you this morning. Oh, lift your hands, church, and give the Lord praise. I don't want to get in such a hurry that we miss out on whatever the Lord wants to do in our heart. God, we glorify and praise you this morning in the house of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you lift both hands right now? This is what this is what I came to do. Oh, tear, tear down, down strongholds, break the chain. I'm the devil. I'm the devil in Jesus' name. Oh, tonight, tonight we I got a right to shake the foundations with praise. So free, hallelujah. This is what this is what we've come to do. Oh, tear, tear down, down strongholds, break the chain. I'm the devil. This is what I want you to do this morning. Just step out of your pew. 
Walk around fellowship, shake a few hands this morning and welcome everybody to the house of the Lord. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. The Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy. Oh, tonight we've got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Glory. Hallelujah, this is, what, this is what we've come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chains by the devil in Jesus' name. Oh, oh, tonight we got a right to shake the cloud that just went away. Glory, hallelujah, this is, what, this is what we've come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chains. With Glory, hallelujah. This is what, well, this is what we've come to do. Oh, tear tear down, down strongholds, break the chains. The devil. I'm the devil in Jesus' name. Oh, 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 Tonight, we've we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Oh, hallelujah. This is what, well, this is what we come oh, to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chain. I'm the devil, I'm the devil in Jesus' name. And tonight we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight we got a right. Shake the foundations with praise. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, I'm gonna praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, the Lord is worthy. The, the Lord, Lord is worthy. worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Just point your hands this way. Those that are in need, God, would you touch them this morning? Who can kept themselves 
wants to kiss me round about. Oh, Thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. Oh, Thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're the glory. demons who can count themselves against me round about. Oh no, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of demons who they count themselves against me round about. Oh, and thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're the glory Sometimes 
to sit back, stand back. You don't have to wait. Today could be the day that the Lord does something great in your life. Maybe you feel like this morning you need to turn over a new leaf and you've waited and you've waited and you've waited and this morning is the day. Today, this is it right now. This is it right now. Maybe you've been battling or struggling with some particular thing. But today is the day. I'm going to get my breakthrough today. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to lift your hands across this church. And I want you to begin to pray with me right here. I want you to pray for those that are among us this morning that need a breakthrough but continually keep telling themselves, I can't get it. I can't do it. I'll never be like that. I'll never be able to live it. I'll never feel that. I'll never feel the touch of God that way. Come on, let's begin to pray this morning. If you're here this morning and you need a breakthrough, I encourage you to step out by faith. Make today a day that you can look back on and say, that day, God gave me a breakthrough. Father, we praise you right now. I'm asking you, Lord, that you're going to reach out into this congregation. God, that you're going to touch hearts and lives. Lord, that you're going to reach out to those that are hurting. God, those that are going through troubles, I pray, Lord, that you'll give them faith to overcome God's faith, to move the mountains, to speak to the mountains that are in their way this morning, God. We give you praise right now, Lord. Lord, that you'll do exactly as we began to sing a few minutes ago, break every chain. Lord, I pray this morning that you'll touch her ear, Lord. God, touch her body. Touch her mind and her family, Lord. You know what they've been through. You know the troubles and the struggles every day, God. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you'll give them the peace of mind that they need, Lord. Oh, I believe in you, Lord, through all the troubled waters that you're going to be the peace speaker that they need this morning. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. you to listen to me this morning for just a minute. If you don't hear anything else this morning, we're worshiping the Lord. God's moving. He's touching different people, but I want you to hear me. If you need help in your life, if you need God to do something in your life, and God passes by the way that he did on the day whenever he, they were expecting an angel to trouble the water, but instead of that, Sister Wilma, Jesus came by the pool of Bethesda and he healed a man that day. I want, to, I want to tell you this today. If you're not willing to get in the pool when God troubles the water, a week from now, 
Don't blame God. Don't point your finger at the Lord and say, you know, I've got this trouble and this problem. I want to tell you this morning that if you'll be willing, I know my God good enough. I've seen Him work miracles. I've seen Him do great things. I know my God good enough that if you're, if you're willing to step out by faith and come to the altar and ask God to give you help with whatever that problem is, I know God is good enough to do it. Now the rest is up to you. I can't make anybody do anything. I'm not going to make anybody do anything. But I can assure you of this. God is good to His Word. And He'll do things in your life that you didn't know God could do. So if you have a need, if you can't find the courage within yourself to come to the altar, I encourage you to kneel down right wherever you're sitting at somewhere, somehow. Get a hold of the Lord this morning. Lord, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me.
for you to have the breakthrough you need. Storm, and I will lift my hands for you are who you are no matter where I am and every tear I cry you hold in your hands you never left my side and though my heart is torn says it's it's easy when life's easy and God's on the mountain it's easy to praise the Lord but like I've heard Sister Jackson sing many times it's in the valley God is still the God in the valley you got to learn how to praise the Lord right in the middle of a storm I think sometimes that's the key to the peace that you and I need is to be able to praise the Lord in the midst of a storm I like to hear Brother Caleb sing that because I know I've been with him and seen him go through some storms. It means so much more whenever you've been there and you can still sing about it and you live to tell about it. I think they call that a testimony of what the power of God is able to do. Has anybody else got a testimony this morning that you could raise your hand and say, Pastor Myers, I've been through some things. 
I really do. I have a testimony. It's only because of God's grace that I made it this far. Otherwise, I don't know how I feel like I would have lost my mind. I don't know how I got this far except for the help of the Lord. I saw something one time. It kind of stuck with me. I was watching something and and that that I was watching this family had lost a child and loss is a very difficult thing no matter who it is really in most every case you can work with somebody and then pass away and that's that can be difficult but there's just something about when a child dies passes away it's hard and that that I was watching the family was trying to find some solace from their pain and from their grief and trying to understand why that it was. And I remember the minister that was counseling this family said, there's really nothing that I can say, do, or that really anybody else can do that can fix, can make it all better. But he said over the years of experience and being a minister, he said, there's one thing that I've learned. Sometimes it can bring you a sense of peace just to know you're not the only one that's ever gone through this. And you won't be the only one that survives it. No matter what situation you go through, it could be the loss of a wife, a husband. You could be battling with some form of problem in your life, something going on that you're wrestling with that seems to just dominate your life and it's just like your life is a roller coaster and doesn't seem to get any better. And I can assure you, it's hard for me to really give you any other peace than to just know that in Christ is where you'll find it. But I can tell you this. You're not the only one that's ever been through anything like this. And I can assure you this morning, if you'll put your trust in the Lord and you'll follow Him with all of your heart, you won't be the only one that's overcome it. That's something to think about. There are so many stories sitting on these pews today. Stories of people that have overcome addictions. Stories of people who have gone through terrible marriages, women that have been abused verbally, physically, gone through a rough divorce, their past, something that they don't like to think about. There are families here this morning that have had problems within their immediate family, things that have just made it so difficult until it got to the place that family don't call, they don't talk, they try to avoid each other because of everything that's happened. You won't be the last one. Somebody else will go through the same thing. So I tell you this morning, just knowing that somebody else may have been through the very same thing and they made it through, to me that gives me hope and it reminds me it doesn't have to end this way. I mean, think about so many different scenarios this morning. Derek, you... You're probably like me. You've probably used your hands and your feet throughout all of your life so much that you just take them for granted. You don't think anything about the use and the ability to use your hands and feet. Suppose you got into a car accident or something happened and you lost both of your legs all the way up to here. As you sit there and you think about your situation, you think, man, I'm all by myself and how am I going to overcome this? Sometimes when they take them through therapy and they show them what they can do and the prosthetics and different things they can use to help them recover and regain life again, a lot of times they'll, they'll bring in people that have been through that and people that already have their, their uh, you know, legs that have been made for them and people that have gone through that. And what it does, Brother Steve, is it, it helps that person to see somebody else has been through this they they made it 
And so as I laid there in the bed last night and I thought to myself, I, I can't do this. I can't make it. When they see that, Brother David, even if they don't believe it, it sure gives them something they got to think about. And so I'll, I'll tell you all that this morning because I, I mentioned the other service. I preached basically an entire message. For those of you that missed it, I preached on the center of attention. And I talked about how that Martha and Mary were in the house. Martha, it was Martha's house. She let her brother Lazarus and Mary live with her. Some think Martha might have been a widow woman, possibly, but she was a single woman. And on this particular day, Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, visits their house. Martha's trying to make sure everything is exactly just right. She wants to take good care of Jesus. While she's going about trying to make everything just perfect, Mary is at the feet of Jesus in a studious position soaking up everything. Martha gets frustrated enough that she's bold enough to confront Jesus to bring her own sister into question. And she says, in other words, what, what do you think? Don't you think she should be helping me, Lord? I mean, I am doing all of this and that. And Jesus replies back to her, and Martha, you're so cumbered about with so many things. But you see, Mary has chosen the better part. And that's not going to be taken away from her. In other words, I'm not going to take that from her. I wanted to give you just a real brief kind of an overview of what the Lord laid on my heart because it was a life-changing thing for me. And sometimes things that are life-changing for you for whatever reason don't seem to impact other people as much. But the more I got thinking about this, Brother Billy, I thought to myself of all the things that we as a people do in church. From the time we walk through the door, walk out of the door, go out of our daily lives. So many things that we do that Jesus is not at the very center of attention. We're busy, we're doing and going, but the Lord's not the center. As I ministered the other night, told the church, I said, listen, every song that we sing, it's not about an entertainment. We don't come to impress anybody. If we fail, we are going to give God praise anyway. Because everything that we do is to point people to the Lord. I think that if we'll start getting back to the place that we put Christ at the very center of every message, of every testimony, of every motive, every intention, every song that we sing. The reason we get up and sing is because we want to glorify God, not because we have talent, not because we can, but because of Him. I preach, Brother David, not because I can, not because it's Sunday morning and it's my lot to preach again, but I preach to point people to Christ. And I want to tell you this morning, the greatest objective that Grace Street Church of God has is that you and the people that come in contact with this church, if they don't see us, because I'm not after them seeing me, it's not Pastor Meyer's church, not the Church of God's church. If it's God's church, then we're here for the right reason, and everything is about the Lord. I want to see people's lives changed. My friend, I want to tell you this morning that as a pastor... My greatest desire is to see you get closer to the Lord. Let me tell you about church, in case you didn't already know. You look around you, there are different people. Some of them, probably most of them, are not your blood relatives. But because we're a part of the family of God, the Bible gives us an illustration about the body, talks about there are many members in the body, 
You might be the toe. You might be the leg. You might be the head. But every part of that body to the Lord is important. We need to understand as a people that if we're part of this body here at this church at Gray Street, you're important. You're not just important to me, but you're important to the Lord. You need to stop letting the enemy beat you, tell you, because you don't sing as good as somebody else, because you don't preach like another preacher, because you don't have a talent or ability or, or, or you're not asked to be in a position that somehow you're of a less importance. Let me tell you this. You can actually be thankful because when the Lord gave parables about the different talents being given out, those that have more are expected and required more. So just be thankful this morning on one degree that you don't have a greater responsibility to be accountable for all the talents and gifts that you've been given and what you've done with them. Be thankful for what God has given you. Use it. And don't let the devil steal it from you. Because if you don't mind, the devil will come by and take that away from you. But as a church family, we bind together. And this is what I wanted to tell you. In my own family, we have our problems, just like any family. We haven't reached heavenly perfection yet. I'm sure my wife wishes that I had reached heavenly perfection but I still leave a mess here and there. I still forget things. I still have my quirks and problems. There's a commitment between us that even when we get frustrated with one another that we, we may get up the next day and we may not talk as much as we did the day before, but guess what? We're not, we're not going to get a divorce. We're not leaving each other. We have way too much established and we love each other and we press through our problems and we get where we're going in spite of our differences. I want to tell you something about a church family. You look around you and I'm thankful for all of your uniqueness. I really am because your uniqueness makes you who you are. And as a pastor, I'm not here to nitpick you or nitpick anybody else. I just want to see you get closer to the Lord. You may be farther away than somebody else. To me... That's the least of my concern is about how far and all of that. My concern is that you know that you're loved. Because I really do. I love you. I haven't given seven years of my life for no reason. I don't do this just so I can say I pastor a church. That was the case. I'd have quit a long time ago. But I love you. And I want you to know you're loved. It's important for you to know that this morning. It's important for you to know that even if you have issues, even if you have little things that you know are a problem, I don't want you walking into church on a Sunday morning because you hadn't been here in three weeks and feel like you can't talk to me or feel like, you know, that, well, Brother Myers is looking down his nose because, you know, I didn't have my hat on straight this morning. The truth is, I love you no matter what, and I will always do my best to make sure you know that. And I mean that from my heart. Please let us together reciprocate that love. I want us to do that. That's what I want to see. One of the things that impressed me about Grace Street Church of God when I came here so many, is okay if I talk to you all for a minute. I mean, I didn't preach this morning, so I guess this is okay. But you know, when I came here almost seven years ago, I... One of the things that impressed me the most is that the people here really loved and they had a compassion and a care for each other. And I remember Sister Jackson when we pulled up in the parking lot and she met me and my wife out there. It was one of the greatest feelings to see a familiar face and somebody that we loved. And I knew she loved us. I I really felt that she did. And we felt a love here. You see, before we came to this church, I'm not going to go into it, but we went and visited one church, and I felt like they threw us on their barbecue grill, tossed us over a few times, and made sure we were blackened on all sides and then sent us out the door. As a church that we tried out. But when I came here, I didn't feel that. And I don't ever want to lose that. 
I want to make sure that you not only feel love, but you also show love to each other. Because I believe that this is the word. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. That you have love one to another.